Do you want to enhance your XRL racing experience? Sign up to Premium today to receive 800 Microsoft points from XRL Gamertag and join the ever-growing community. An ad-free forum with a members area and additional features such as extended private messaging limits. Every stream uploaded to members forums from F1 to F5000 and XRL Classics. A custom signature on the XRL forum of your choice. All new setup lap guides from F1 drivers such as Velexity, F1 Nige and Mr Ice Cold Andy. Monthly prize draws with big prizes from sponsors such as GT Omega Racing and Gamepod.co.uk. Pick the car you want next season with XRL driver priority. Premium members get to pick their car ahead of the driver draws. 10% off all store items and a free key ring when you sign up. So help support the league today and sign up for XRL Premium. So what can you expect in Season 7 from the Excite Racing League? Unrivaled coverage from all seven leagues we run, from F1 right down to Tier 6 and the F1 Classics. Watch live streams on race nights as well as the Sunday night pre-show. New multi-twitch means that you can watch two league races or points of view at once. Watch our league races on YouTube a few days after the race for non-flash users, mainly iPad and iPhone users. Watch clips from the forums such as Overtakes of the Week and any other uploads from league races directly put onto our forum page for you to watch. Join the forum discussion. Give your pre and post race analysis as well as all the talking points from your league races, real life F1 and get to learn to know more of the community. So what are you waiting for? Watch League XRL and get the inside track. Good evening and welcome to the XRL live stream live from Catalonia, Spain. This is round five of the F1 Division Championship. In the box for me tonight, no Smithbro, no Pete Marcroft. It is none other than Christopher Moss, our GP2 live streamer. How are you, Chris? Uh, I'm not too bad, Dan. How are you? Um, yeah, I'm really, really excited from this qualifying session. No TRL button. Pete has won all four races this season. Well, he got penalty at China, giving him but in theory he's going to the line first every race so far. No, he's not here today um, and it is as close as ever. So far 6 tenths covering it. Last year's, last year's pole position was Mr Ice Cold Andy in the wet with a confused Emu getting his only win of last season. F1 Nigel Lewis Hamilton rounding off the top three. So it turns out that, uh, this is going to be a pretty really close race and wow this qualifying session is extremely close. It's anyone's game. It's 13 drivers of all. Sorry, it's a full lobby now. Um, and the gap is 6 tenths. So we're going to get live straight to the action. And who are you on board with, Chris? Uh, I'm currently on board with none other than XRL Stewart, GP2 driver. He's set a 118.7 on the option tyres and he's just going in for an in-lap. Right, so yeah, I'm on board with XRL Stewart as well. So just trying to find someone else. We are in that sort of interlude where, there are, where they've only just done their laps and they've gone into the pits or they're on in laps or, um, so there's no one actually really out doing laps Mr. Ice Cold Andy's qualified 10th on the 19.3 we know he's better off than that 
Um, he's on the prime tyres. Now, he did get pole last year with a 29.0, the full wet conditions. Uh, and he was in control of this race last season until a late disconnection where uh, that sort of gave away any chance of, well, he was in control of the race uh, by about 20, 30 seconds. So he has good pace round here if he can deliver. But his performances this season have been, well, nothing short poor. Um, poor in terms of strategy, poor in terms of just general pace. He's had... TRL buttons to live up to, and the only time he's beaten him was last season at Brazil, uh, at the final race of the season, but they actually had a really good scrap. So it seems very track limited for Andy as to where he has that fantastic pace to really give TRL button a worry for uh, his win. But, well, he's not here today, so Andy, he has got a good chance if he stays in the game and in the connection. Definitely, but obviously defending world champion, he, he hasn't lived up to the expectations of the championship. No, no he hasn't. Uh, everyone would have thought, well, we all knew the threat to TRL Bun and the immense lap times he can do. At the same time, you would have thought he could have done better than what he has done. So it's a little bit disappointing, but um, he, he can see this as somewhere where he can really start his championship push. Uh, or maybe not a championship, but the push because he's about 90 points off. But maybe just, well, it, it's so close in that mid pack. Second place is, I think, about 30 points off Andy, who's right at the near the bottom. So, I mean, a good result here, a win. We've seen him shoot up many places out of the relegation zone, probably out of the relegation playoff zone. Um, and this lap looks good. I'm on board of it. It seems like it's down late. 50, um, getting into the exit. Just running a little bit wide on the exit. Don't want to run too wide. Could unsettle the car. Well, this long, sweeping right hand. The second gear, maybe third. If you've got enough confidence in the car, drop it down to second to the right hand. And now you've got this final tricky curb. Takes that very well. Easily spin up the car on the exit of the second curb. But this looks a good lap as he turns around the final corner. Down to start, finish straight. And this is an 18.6 on the prime. What a lap time from Andy there. On the prime tyre as well. I mean, I think TRL button could go about half a second quicker than that, but uh, not a bad lap of time by all means. It doesn't look like he's backing off, so we'll, we'll try and find someone else and get back onto him. Um, Rusty Nuts are signing in for the evening. Good evening to Motorsport Nerd is signing in. We're getting a good turnout on the stream ready. Say hi, get involved in the chat. We'll talk about the main event, which is the Monaco Grand Prix, a little bit later on. Uh, we did have our little extended bit with Pete Marcroft, Chris, and LGS about their, about the in, a bit more of an in-depth look about the Grand Prix, mainly because um, Pete's not here this week. He's not, he's not going to be actually on the F1 stream for the next four weeks. However, he will be on the GP2 stream tomorrow night, watching the likes of me, Rusty Nuts, who's back, uh, Toasty's also back. So he will be doing the next couple of weeks, but he's off to Le Mans, so it's good fun for him. But Taps, he's the F1 division reserve coming in this week, and he's done the 19.1 on the prime, which is, that's impressive. The 19.1 on the prime, which I do that. Well, I can, but not very often. Uh, let's see if we can improve. Let's say he's a little bit slow on the timing, is what I saw, but he's going to keep going. Uh, good evening, Rusty. Who's got pole, he asks. We shall have a look in a second. Watch the snap from taps, and then we will get onto the provisional timings because most of them actually seem to be sitting in the pit. A full lobby tonight, a couple of uh, Anderson Tanko is making an uh, appearance as well as Stewart tonight, but a decent turnout. Taps does look a decent drive, gets a little bit curve on the inside, slows the exit down quite significantly there, and he's backed off. So let's have a look at who's done what. Um, so far, and the pole position is Velexity with a 17.6. That is a mega lap time from him there. On the option tyres, of course, half a second ahead of Nutters with Stewart. Also, I think that's a prime run actually of an 18.5. I'm not too sure. Sean Bean is next. Uh, oh, as Beerless has now took pole with a 17.5. We thought Velexity was quick. Um, Nutters is P3 now. Stewart's P4. Second off the pace is Sean Bean. Bit of a gap, but I think for the guys, there's a lot of varying strategy here. Um, Taps is actually down in the last at the moment. Being on the prime, so I just like, I don't know why, it's Jambo who's last. It's pretty tight from 5th down to 13th though. 7 tenths, pretty much the gap. 
and there's obviously varying strategies in that. But it's close, it's quick, but Fearless has done a really good job. Hey, Fearless is just on the game at the minute for this track. Oh, I, I said this to everyone before, I think Fearless has got a chance, and they laughed me off! But he's got that, that's a quick lap time. I mean, the thing is, you look at that and you think, well, but the TRL button could not do that on the prime track. So that means that you have to use options. There's no the TRL button doesn't find that much pace in the options compared to prime to prime two, three tenths. He's much quicker on the prime tyre. So yeah, I'm not too sure about that. It's a very, very good time for Fearless. Much quicker than I think many other leagues would go these days. Um, so yeah, it's an impressive lap time. Stuart B949 on the options. He's gone from prime to option. Um, and looking to improve as it gets a little bit of wheel stuff on the first uh, tyre lap. Chicane, slow chicane. Uses all the curves down to the start finish line. This is one. This is the longest straight, so the longest run down to turn one, I should say, in the calendar. Very, very long. And unlike some tracks like Korea, you've definitely got both faces of the start correct. Oh, as he loses the back end there, oh, squirming on the rear end. He does a lot of practice and it's showing, says Rusty Nuts. That's in reply to XRL Fearless. Well, yeah, that's right, he does. He does go a bit crazy on his practice. And when it, he's been a bit unlucky this season in some respects, but that is definitely showing what he can do. I've just gone over the line with the LGS. He's just improved to an 18.6 on the option tyres and he's just an 18.6 LGS. Stuart B949, I'm not sure how good this lap is. Gets a decent purchase off the track there at the slow hairpin. Takes this long sweeping right hander. Runs a little bit wide, but the speed is good. Second gear through here as we go to the final couple of corners. Oh, runs deep at the first part of the chicane. And that is lap ruined. I would almost, yeah, I'd go into the pits. It's a little bit late there, but uh, he manages to get the car into the pit. Oh, he gets reset with the heck of his car. That's a bit of a fail of the week for you. Uh, Sean B now, prime ties. He's done 18.5. Now, I'm not sure if his first run was on the prime or not. I have a feeling it was. So that's an impressively good time from Sean B. Second off the pole, but that's on the prime time the option. So let's see what he can do, if he can improve or not. This is an impressive lap. I don't think this is a lap that's going to improve. He has to have a mighty second half. The lap runs a little bit wide. We're going to have to keep an eye on that track. There. It's quite easy to get there. Oh, he's got the curve on the exit of the uh, sweeping right hander. I will always say give up on this one. I don't think he's got it. There's 40 seconds left of qualifying, and it feels like Sean Bean's backing off, but let's keep on board just in case. He will get another lap if he has the fuel to do it. He's definitely kept his curves as if he will. So I think he's going to be the last one over the line. Next car behind him is a good 30 seconds off. So, we will get on board with Sean a little bit later. He'll be the last one to go over the line. Mr. Ice Cold and he, he's aiming to get over the line in 10 seconds. He's on the option tyres. That isn't going to happen. So, Andy has made a bit of a mistake there in qualifying. Reese 26. Looks like he's backed off his lap as well. He's qualified eight. NMR Mr. Indigo is on a lap on the option tyres. Runs a little bit wide at the hairpin. Down the hill. It's an okay lap. Might not be an improvement though. It's be tight. Alexi did mess up his final run, he went into the gravel at turn two, so by the looks of it, Fearless has got pole position. Uh, quick question, I don't know if you saw, was rain forecast for the race? Unfortunately, I didn't look. I'm assuming I down to the varied strategy, I would say the first stint's not going to be that, as Indigo does pit, so he doesn't improve. There's only one car out on track, that's Reese 26, he isn't going to improve, so there you have it guys. What a qualifying session from XRL Fearless. 17.5 to take pole position, absolutely fantastic. And it's only a tenth clear of Alexity, but it just shows it's anyone's game. And there's a lot of people on varying strategies. It's someone like Tat, who's down in 12, and he's done a really good lap time, a 19-1 on the prime. 
he's not out of it by any means. And well, this is a difficult one. If you're watching live on Twitch tonight or on the multi Twitch with, well, actually, there is no multi Twitch tonight because it's just me. Um, that's a good helmet. Get involved in the chat. Let us think. Let us not think who your choice is to win the race. And Chris, who's yours? Uh, race pace. I'm gonna go Belexity. Race pace Belexity. Well, he did win the Chinese race. Can he keep it so there's only been two race winners this season? Or can a third different race winner from the first five races get involved? Like to hear your thoughts tonight. Steve-O signing in. Like Fozzy, Motorsport Nerd, Rusty Nuts. There's plenty more of you watching. Get involved on the chat. I know you're there. Um, but yes, yeah, so have you been updating our Twitter feed? We're going to try and get a uh, bit of a Twitter feed going tonight. Try and keep the try and give you live race updates via Twitter as well. So fearless taking pole there by only a tenth to Velexity, so it's very very close, and it is an extremely important run down to turn one here. It's such a long run down. I think it's about 800 meters, I think, down to turn one. It's extremely long. Um, so yeah, the start is crucial here. And especially if you're running no assists, which I think all of these guys do now run no assists, it is, you know, extremely important to make sure you get the launch perfect. But you're going to go for Lexi. I'm going to go for the pole sitter. Not because I'm boring, but because I said it before we went on stream. I think uh, Velexity is going to do the job. XRL Craig Senna signing in for night. You can't see anything. Uh, maybe you need to refresh your stream. I don't know what the problem is with that as the race has already started. That might have been taps, I reckon, being a bit new. Probably just forgot or didn't know uh, to do that. But it's going to be an interesting one. So no button, says Steve. No, he's not here tonight. Uh, picked up. You obviously weren't there at the start. He will be going to try isn't racing be sites. He's made it extremely close between a lot of these guys. Oh, you can't. I don't think half this grid could win this race. Ready. Just comes down on who's there at the right time, possibly because I think a lot of them are equally paced. Some people are doing different strategies. But yeah, it's so hard to pick a winner tonight. I don't think there's a good chance me and Chris we're going to be wrong tonight. So here we are for the Spanish Grand Prix, live from Catalonia, Spain. This is round five of the XRL F1 Championship. We are on the grid, ready to retire, and it's lights out, and away we go for the Spanish Grand Prix. 14 drivers going down to turn one, fearless. What sort of start has he got? He's got a reasonable start for Lexi. He hasn't got anywhere near. He's just used half of his purse to defend. Let's see who, who can have a go at turn one. There's a McLaren on the inside of Lexi. Lexi runs wide, and there's a side pole glitch. Side pod glitch into turn one. That's definitely going to have to be reviewed again. Uh, I believe that's Sean Bean who's actually benefited from it. He's now dropped down to third. The Williams, and I think that's Mr. Ice Cold Andy, or is that Nutter? That's Nutter, sorry. He's got an absolute fly. He's run wide, that the uh, long sweep on the right hand. But he keeps the position. There's three drivers who are out of uh, out of luck there, I suppose. I think Alexity being one of them. Um, and my Mr. Indigo up into fourth place on the prime tyre. He's second place in the championship. He's absolutely outperformed the car. Reese 26 has lose, lost an M plate. He's up into P5 on the option tyres. He's had a reasonably good start, but fearless. He's got a great start. He's a second and a half ahead. Oh, it's Reese 26. Bins it by into the wall by the looks of it. And that could be a lost M plate, if not a bit more than that. Uh, there's a Ferrari with a lost end plate there. Jambo up into P5. He's on the prime tyre. There's a lot of r runs on the prime. LGS on the option. He is missing the end plate, though. And that will suffer in the longer corner. It's Tom 65 moves to the back end. And he's lost an end plate now. What a messy first lap. You cannot go third gear into that corner, especially on the heavy fuel, or you'll spin the car. And he's done just that. He's lost a few positions. Three, in fact, down into 10th place. This is carnage first lap. I can't believe it, Chris. No, but the two losses are 13th and 14th, and Reese has got a puncher and lost a complete front wing. Round wide. Start for him. He, he missed, he's losing an end play. He's just been out of luck this season so far since his return. He had a really good Australian week, deserved more until his connection loss last week, and he's going to find it hard. I think he might need a safety car or something, because the pace of these guys are relentless, so he's going to have to try something. Andy, up into P2, he thought it was nutters. 
but it's actually Andy using P2 on the prime tyre. So, wow, last year's champion. What a start for him. And you look at the guys behind Peerless. You've got Sean, you've got Indigo, you've got Andy, you've got, I think that's in fifth place, that's Jambo. They're all on the prime tyre. They're all doing a different strategy. And the next option runner is sixth place in LGX. So, Peerless has got his work cut out. He's got a lead, but the intense tyre wear around here doesn't mean too much if uh, these guys start closing up on the prime tyres later on in this first stint. But yeah, what a bad start for Reese. Unbelievable. Definitely a few uh, reviews to be looking at on lap one. Last week, no incidents to report in the F1 division at all. Um, but this week, that first lap is definitely going to have to have a bit of a look. A bit of careless driving, a bit of losing control of the car and people on just their own fault. Um, but yes, everything seems to have calmed down now. We can get going. I don't know where Nuts is, but he's had an awful start in the Williams wherever he is. Um, Jordan Kelly signed on to the string. Good evening. Jordan taps us up into PA on the prime tyre. He's looking very good today. Um, Psychic Taco is on the prime as well. He's looking okay in P9. Running wide is Tom625. He is having an awful race as Nutters goes through and takes the final points paying position at the moment. Uh, 12th is Stewart and he has got the. Uh, he's got Velexity in the options right behind him. Getting involved in a cyber glitch with each other very early on at turn one. I have to have a look at that again, but yeah, you have to feel for Reese. He is a good 20 seconds down on the rest. He's going to have to do some awesome strategy to uh, get, get away with something today. Yeah, and, you know, it all come down to that first corner incident, I believe. What was your take on it? Well, I was on board with Velexity at the time. It just looked like a little bit of a miscommunication between him and the Williams of Nutters and I don't know how Stuart got involved with it but he got taken out into turn two as well so a bit scrappy but I think it was three wide going into the first couple of corners and well when you're so close and the sidebook glitches uh, as it is it's only going to it's only going to end up one way but someone who does keep consistently impressing me this season is NMR Mr Indigo he is right behind these guys fighting for P2 and 3 which is Sean Bean and Mr Ricefield Andy Sean getting a much cleaner turn 1 he was almost blocked going into turn 1 by Andy saying he was not having this inside line couldn't get side by side with him to not take that place on the inside but Sean Bean definitely uh, giving Andy some food for thought out here today Quite a lot at the moment. He's second in the championship in the go, but he is really impressing. Um, yeah, he got unlucky on the final lap at Bahrain last week, but he did. Uh, Fearless is kind enough to give a position up to him. Yeah, so I, the thing is, you have to think would he have made the move or not? Um, have that sort of thing. Adam signing in. What has he missed? Well, a bit of a um, poor lap one, really. Some some clumsy driving from some of the guys running wide into the uh, gravel, which has caused a few people, especially Reese 26, who's dead last to break his wing. Uh, Tom 65 has struggled. We've had a side pull glitch going into turn one, which will have to be. That's the, that is that's the main incident. I think it's fair to say. There's not been actually much wrong with how the driving is on track and it's just been that turn one side pod glitch which caused it but other than that it's just clumsy mistakes from some of the drivers but everything's calmed down now it's all good and Indigo is right behind these guys for P2 and there's a battle behind that Chris can you, can you get on board with that one? Uh, I definitely can but I think it looks like about P6, P5 I don't know P, P6, 7, 8 looks good. Yeah, there's a battle with the two Toro Rossos of Jambo and Taps, uh, and the Ferrari of Bobbitt. Taps looks Play. good on his debut. He's the F1 reserve driver. He can't commit every race, but uh, look, he's doing good on debut today. He was on the prime tyre as well. Now, how long is the Fearless's gap is not what you would call massive. Considering it's an option run, he's about two to three seconds, maybe a little bit more ahead. Than not much more, probably about no more than four seconds in the lead. So, 
Andy is, and these three guys are doing a good job. Indigo nearly losing the back end of the car on the exit of the second part of that chicane. And our first driver goes into pits, and that's LGS. He pits off the option tyres, but he's missing a complete end plate there. And the side part of the uh, winglet, and that is, well, it's going to be a wing change. So any delta time he makes up by undercutting, he is just going to lose now but with the wing change. So that's probably why he's pitted in quite early. Not as up into P9 now then. Uh, but yeah, let's get on board with this uh, battle, the Psychic Taco. All the way up into his active Jamba, I think. Up into P9. Uh, Jamba's now in P6, Tats passing with the DRS assist. Uh, so it's P5 up until P8 then. So these four giving it their all. Uh, the Ferrari of. Is that in the Ferrari? That is uh, XRL Roberts. He took back in today. He's all of a sudden struck a bit of form getting into the podium last week. A couple of podiums in back, so he's uh, all of a sudden starting to get a bit faster. Uh, Mr. Steve saying, Bernie, what times were they in qualifying? Well, pole position was 17.5, one by fearless, one tenth quicker than Velexity. Uh, the rest were in the 80s. Teams on the options would be a good time, I would say. Maybe in the 18s, if you could, we'd definitely see you doing well in GP3 on Wednesday night. Well, actually, you're not racing, are you, Steve? Are you? It's Mr. Steve O, he's not racing, so. Roberts has made it through on, I think that was a Toro Rosso of Jambo, was it, who's run wide? Um, those guys have just started to open up, actually. So we're going to get on board a little bit further down. It looks like Jambo's going to make a move on the power and he runs incredibly deep though. And he probably will have to give that place back, which it looks like he does. It looks like he does. We'll just make sure. Oh, I've gone the wrong way. Helpful. Yeah, he has given up the place. So Taps is starting to get away from Bobberts, but these guys all of a sudden starting to get onto the back. They've had some clean air, and they're getting onto the back of these three. Indigo, Sean, and Fearless, who have just dropped a little bit further away to Fearless. In fact, Fearless is starting to open a really decent gap now. So who's not getting a gap, though, and that's Mr. Ice Cold Andy. Sean is all over the back of his diffuser. And this battle's continuing to get stronger and stronger. NMR Mr. Indigo is there. He's not really got close enough to get involved. He's just overseeing it, not getting too close. Um, and probably about half a second off. He's not really getting close enough to DRS because Sean's getting it as well. He's about a full second as he runs wide off at Mr. Ice Cold Andy. But now Taps is getting involved in the uh, in the, in the uh, Toy Rosso there. They are no more than a second, just over a second behind. I'm not surprised if he gets DRS to Sean. DRS slipstream down to turn one. And he says, you're not going down the inside. Well, Sean goes to the outside. No more Purs you see, so he's got to go around the outside. Mr. Rose called Andy, make him go the long way around. He tries to break early to get the power down. But Andy is holding firm at the moment. While this is going on, Key is slowly starting to increase his lead in this Red Bull. Good amount of you watching the stream at the moment. 17 of you watching the live stream. Get others involved. Get a bit of a discussion going. We've got a few of you. Um, Rusty Nuts, Steve-O, Jordan Kelly, G61, who's a new driver. Still got to get you in a division for next week. Um, Sean actually's lost a little bit of time this lap. In fact, to the strike scroll down. He's about six or seven tenths down. He was right on him at the DRS, but yeah, he's just lost a bit, and he's had a decent lap. And someone else who's losing it is NMR Mr. Indigo. He's lost two places going Oh, he has. He's gone. Nine. He has lost down to Taps and Bobberts, who have now, they will, they should be in DRS range on this lap. They won't be able to get close enough to make DRS work, but it's impressive from Taps. Has, uh, fearless has gone into the pits. So Fearless is in, he is on the option. So he's made the last eight laps, which I don't know how good that is. But uh, again, Andy now inheriting the lead. He is, um, yeah, he's still under some decent pressure from Steve. Sean, sorry, who nearly overtook him there. And XRL Fearless has come out to clean air in ninth place. And uh, I believe it's XRL LGS. Let's do it. 
What's this? Steve O may require the league's assistant assistance in September, October, November. Why? Explain some more, Steve O. But yeah, these three, they're all on the primes now and they're all delivering some really good lap times. And they're so close on track. Since that early um well, don't know how you want to put it nicely. But uh, after the early incident of turn one, it's actually been a really, really good race. Taco's still involved, and he's P6. He's about five or six seconds off the net lead now. Well, not the net lead, the actual lead of the race. So Jambo's a further couple behind that. But one of these guys have got outside chances to win the race. Even Nutters down in P8 is no more than seven to ten seconds off the lead on the same tie compound as the rest. So he's doing a really good job. Uh, behind that, we've got Fearless, who's made his stop, and he's now only about a second and a half off Nutters in P8 for pitting, probably about a couple of seconds. Then you've got the rest. You've got LGS and Stuart, or I think Stuart has, um, I'm not sure what, what is this And Sean's gone into the lead, and he's messed up turn one. Oh, so it's there. LGS down in P11, he's made a stop. Um, P12 is Valexi. Pretty confident he's now made his stop. Uh, Reese is up into P13. He's not last. He's oh, working collision between his way. Sean and Mr. Ice Cold Andy, and Bobbitts is now leading the race. Oh, God, it's all going on at the front. I am there now. Indigo's got up into P2. In fact, Taps is in P3. What is going on here? here we've got, was anyone at fault for that, do you think? Uh, well, Sean was on the outside, and Mr. Ice Cold Andy kept accelerating, and it was a half hearted sidepole glitch by Codemasters. Uh, uh, it, it's it's not not well, yeah, it hasn't lost him. It hasn't lost him masses of time, but more importantly, it has lost him the lead and actually a podium at the moment. But Andy, yeah, he's really struggling. In fact, he's now going to be overtaken by the McLaren on the inside there. Not quite, but now, actually, in fact, the McLaren's going to try and go around the outside. Andy's getting really aggressive today. He's not having any of it from the McLaren behind, or Sean him for that matter. Taco is giving it his all as Andy pits from fifth place. Um, and behind them, we've got Jambo, and then we've got um, Nutters, who's got uh, Fearless now within DRS range. Fearless is going to be a pit stop ahead of some of most of these guys. Fairly, he will have the others will have an option set for tyres to go through, and we close that gap. I don't think the pit delta is too much around here either, because it's just it's quite a plain easy one. So flat in, flat out, you've just got the pit lane loss, and that is it really. There's no fiddly bits. It's probably about 15 to 20 seconds. I'll tell you someone who has gained out of that, and that is LGS. He's now ahead of Ice Cold Andy after pitting six laps that undercut, earlier. That undercut has worked out well, but yeah, as, as you pointed out, six laps is a lot of laps to do. Um, and Andy's on a different tyre compound, they've gone the other way around, but LGS, he's looking not too bad, but I don't know what position that really is for, net, P2, 3, some, he's in that area, um, he's about 7 to 10 seconds behind Fearless, and probably that as well, but Lex, he's lapping very well, uh, and he's down in P11, it's just such a surprise. See him so far down. And then you've got 12th and 13. Reese 26 has actually overtaken uh, Stuart B949 for position. And Reese has calmed down. He's driving well now. Um, so, okay. So, Steve O's actually. Uh, so, something to do with his uni work. Um, no, it doesn't. Is the answer. Well, I don't know. I have to talk to you a bit about it, in my opinions of it. Um, we can put it on the forums whenever the time comes. But oh, Reese 26 getting incredibly wide. And that's a move for Stewart. Keeps it inside the track limits. Easy move. And that is P12. Reese has been on the moon's tyres for 10 laps now. This will be his 11th. So they're probably not seeing the best of days. But he's not. He's fighting for position still, although he's back down in that awful position. Bobberts leading the re this race, really track extending on the inside there. Got to keep an eye on that corner. He do like to do it. Taps though. He's right behind him in P2. Has been with him the whole race. These guys going at it like any of these two. Uh, interestingly, Mr. Ice Squad Andy has actually got a 10 second penalty from the game. I believe well, it will be may interesting have been to see what it will be for, but it could be that side pod thing. Or... 
Yeah, we'll have to see what that's for. He got a great start, so I don't think it's a lap one. I think it's the incident with Sean about a couple of laps ago. So we'll see what we'll see what happens of it. But perhaps you would think we want to go in the pit and try and block off some of these guys who have just started to make pit stops. But their lap times are decent. Sean Bean now, he's still out. Um, and he will lose out to Andy big time. Uh, staying out. NMR Mr. Indigo now, DRS, using a third of his curve. Look at that gearbox. Sean could not do anything. Andy could defend against Sean. So maybe Sean's got a really bad gearbox. But Indigo goes deep at turn one and loses the position. Oh, or Steve-O. I think, geez, uh, geez, I don't think it's meant to really tie in to racing in the XRL. It's just the question he's got for his uni course. As Indigo goes into the gravel. Indigo's been driving well today, but just too many sloppy errors like that. Fearless, though. He's all dipped his tyre into the gravel there. He can't do that. He's nearly a pit stop ahead of these guys now. Fearless now on the back of his teammate who had yet to pit. I'm liking the Twitter feeds, I'm loving it. Fearless makes a move on his teammate then, and that's P4 sorted. He's now got a bit of a tougher opponent in Sean Bean to make pass. But having said that, the tyre compounds and how fresh these tyres are for Fearless should mean he's going to get a move done. Probably on the inside here, he's going to force Sean out wide and that's a solid move from Fearless. He's now up into P3. He's only about four to five seconds behind the race leader who have yet to pit. He's in complete domination, Fearless. He's looking fantastic value for a race win at the moment. Because the first driver who has been in and pitted, who's behind him, is LGS down in P6, and that's a good 10 seconds. So he's got a very nice buffer, Fearless. Andy's gap, Andy has really closed that gap to LGS, though. That gap's no more than two seconds now, and he's on the option tyres, so you would think he would have a go very, very soon at trying to get that move done. Oh, I've got a ghost car. Taps is in the wall for me, and he's not moving at all. Oh, dear. Where's Taps on my screen? That's the question. Fact, he's in P9 on my screen, um, so probably gone in the pits. That's why you've now caught him there. Tom is having a shocker, uh, lack of practice for him. As oh, Taps loses connection. That is not what we wanted to see. Uh, sh shame for Taps. He was running so well. Um, oh, he's got my friend's list. But we'll speak to him. A little bit later. Uh, so where's Swish? Swish is going to be away for the next four F1 races. However, he will be on tomorrow night uh, covering GP2. But he's got a few issues on Sundays. And he's going to Le Mans as well uh, in about a couple of weeks' time. So that's why he's not around. Um, Taps is doing a big race. He was having a big, big race today. And, well, he's now out of it. You have to feel for him. Let's get his opinion on situation. But yeah, we'll definitely get a. Uh, I'm sure Swishbone will probably actually do like a little podcast, like he usually does when he goes to Japan. So might get might get him to do one for the uh, for the Le Mans. There's Tom six two five. Wow. Well, I don't think that's a loss of connection. I think that's him just uh, saying enough's enough today. He's not got it. And, well, 16 laps in is a bit early, but uh, Tom65, yeah, he's been struggling today. And it's just been down to a lack of practice this week. Because I think, yeah, he's turned off his Xbox, I would say. Yeah, he's gone off one minute ago. He's just struggled today for just pace. Game. 
It is. So then there were 12. I think most of these would stay. Reese is in the worst position of the lot. But the rest are fighting very, very closely. As Fearless, is that five second lag for Fearless? Or is that just my end? It's just my end then. Um, and his lead is reasonable now. Indigo has yet to pit. He always make, makes his tyres go further than anyone else. Andy is now passed on LGS. So Andy's the closest competition Fearless now has in terms of net position. All right, I'm gonna go get a quick drink because my I am I am dying for work at the moment. But Lexi's having a really good race. He's he's fighting back. I mean, his race pace looks really solid. Sean Bean has got psychic Taco behind him, but Taco runs into the gravel there and he's lucky to get away with that one. I'm gonna leave it on this uh, three-way scrap for P9, Nutters, Jambo, and I believe that's the McLaren Stewart. Are fighting for P9 and 10, so low championship points. And Stewart holds on on the inside. He can't get the move done. He might have a look around the outside. This would be an impressive move if he get, get it done. Can't quite. He has to surrender. Jambo has really one and only racing line around that corner. That makes it still. Interestingly, Indigo has now come into the pit and he's going to be behind all of this action. Very, very late from Indigo. He's going to be behind it all. He's going to be right in the middle of it though. Though he is going to be on significantly fresh tyres, but those tyres have got to warm up, and yeah, Crikey is not coming out in the best of places there. Stewart getting an absolutely fantastic drive off the right hand of recent tyres. Well, it doesn't surprise me. As Stewart now tries the inside, and I'm not so sure about that move from Stewart. Dive down the inside from Stewart there. I'm not sure if that's a totally legit move there from Stewart, but we'll we'll leave that. We'll know that down and review it later. In a moment, Mr. Windigo now. He's on very very fresh tyres. Give the feel for Reese as well. I mean, he's deserved a lot more from this season, and he's not had it. The league is so tight. I know TRL Buttons are a little bit ahead of these guys, but they're not racing. I mean, any early incidents are just, uh, make, just mean so much to your race. And it's a shame. India, you need to get a move on, that's for sure. Here's uh, Jambo retires. It's a bit disappointing to see as many people as this not racing the whole thing, but Reese, bad one for you today. What really happened? We all started from lap one, didn't it? That's from lap one where I got my end plate taken off and just bad luck ever, ever since. Uh, I don't understand what's the point of me even racing because I just get some bad luck every single race. So, how did the end plate come off? Because we saw you missing an end plate. Was that just from the cycle glitch going into turn one from the car cars in front? Yeah, it's just a glitch into turn one. And then you just ran a little bit wide going up the hill. It's that flat right hand. I'm not really flat in the race, but just uh, running wide into the gravel and then that shooting you off into the into, into the ball pace, really breaking your wing. But other than that, the pace seems not so bad. It was just obviously losing a crazy amount of time so early. It's quite hard to pull that back. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> How did you feel your pace was during the race when you were running? Well, honestly, I thought it was going to be like top five, maybe. But then once again, bad luck takes over again on this one. So, you know, what can you yeah, do? I know how you feel. <laughs> I know what bad luck feels this season as well. It will turn, but when that turns, as anyone's gets really, hopefully. Uh, Hopefully next week at Monaco, but Monaco is a difficult track anyway, in the best of situations. Interesting 
Bobbs has taken second place off Mr. Ice Cold Andy and pulled away to about two seconds of bondage. How do you feel your chances of Monaco being the field level as it is? Oh, I cannot wait. I think it's going to be absolutely horrendous. Honest, I'm not going to lie. I might as well tell the truth now. Um, and what I'm waiting for. Yeah, no, oh, it's not one of those ones everyone looks forward to. Although some people say they enjoy it, but I think it's the vast minority who do enjoy it and that. Uh... As we've seen from races in the past, it has gone crazy. Your record at Monaco has been pretty strong though in the past and you have set some really decent laps. So let's hope that it's got the bad luck's gotta turn at some point. Um, you deserve more at Bahrain definitely I think uh, it was Malaysia as well China, I can't remember but definitely at Bahrain you deserved a lot more than what you got today I, I, I wasn't sure judging from what you said about your qualifying pace earlier on I wasn't too sure but you had a really good start so until until uh, you lost in the ball work later on in the first lap but <laughs> yeah Frustrating time, I know how it feels. Um, but hopefully, it will start to turn around. It's just it's a bit of a shit track for it to turn around on. Oh, we've got to hope, honey. We've got to hope. Monaco's a lottery, so. Anyways, um, thanks for your time. I, know, I do appreciate it. It's pretty tough in the way. Um, uh, I'm, just an, I'm just annoyed at myself for having all this bad luck all the time. Well, yeah, tonight, stupid, um, stupid right hander, Bahrain, curbs. What we what? Uh, something actually was put on the forum yesterday about like a Legends League on F1 2010. It's the best game of the lot. We still just move on to 2010. We'll pick it up from like game for like two quid. There you go. You know what? You know I don't know if anybody's listening on the stream, but I don't know if anybody agrees. But I still think probably the second best game is actually 2012. Second best. 2012 was a good game. I just think because of the um, you could get there's like the bubble at the back of the car. Yeah. Apart from that, it was. What one was your favourite? 11 or 10? 10 was my favourite. It was 10, 12, 13, and 11. Yeah, it was. I can't really remember too much about 11, so I'll probably have to side with you on that. Jambo, saw what happened. Which Your version one? of events on the Stuart. Uh, I don't know, I wasn't, wasn't like a proper ram, but it was a slight tap, and my, and my setup's pretty bad, so I just understeered off. Yeah. Like two things put together. How does the Toro Rosso feel for uh, people that are possibly moving Toro from Sabre in the lower leagues? I like the Toro Rosso, it's just my setup is really bad for this race. You were bang on. You were, you're you're doing some people. decent race pace though. You were right on the back of all the guys who were running on the primes on their first stint, so. You can't have been doing too bad. Does that, does that fill you with a bit more confidence going further on into the season on the tracks that you enjoy? Yeah, but I, I know, like, I hate these first six or seven races and then I'm really good after them. So Silverstone, you're thinking? There's still some on onwards on it. Yeah, so Monaco you're not enjoying them, like, I think the consensus of everyone. I, I, I'm really fast on Monaco because I did a practice yesterday and I was literally blitzed everyone. I have no a really? tendency to like to go into the wall occasionally. 
I think everyone does, but I don't think uh, people can stop that as DRS move is done there by Natas on Stewart, and that's P5. Uh, people are in for their second stints now, so yeah, it's a shame he couldn't uh, complete the race today, but well, it's got to uh, hopefully have a better for both of you. Hopefully, uh, you have a better one and one okay, and it's been pretty difficult over the course of the season for you, but that's why it's a 19 race season and not a couple. So hopefully it'll uh, pick up for you later on, if not next week at Monaco, because it is a complete, absolute guess as to who can win that race. You can be the quickest on the track and break your wing ten times and you'll lose. So, it, you can't tell, it's going to be hard to commentate on for sure, but yeah, thanks for your um, comments both of you. this lobby lagging all over the place because I'm watching well, it. Well, as a spectator point of view or a driver point of view I'm when you're on track? Spectating. Uh, when I was driving it was alright, but spectating and everything. It seems alright to me. Um, I don't know why it would be lagging for you though. <laughs> My first two that. corners were amazing. Yeah, you climbed up the positions like pretty quick. 14th um, to about 5th. Did you see much going on in that first corner? I know as a side conflict between Velexity, I think it was Nutters, and I think there was a McCarran on the inside of Stewart. Um, did you I see much of that? Were you too far back? Wired, but I, I was too far back. I, I, I braked really early for corner one so I wouldn't get near anyone to hit them. And then yeah. I'd see cars flying everywhere and I was straight for the middle. That's, that's a nice one. Well, yeah, shame you couldn't complete the race today. It's a very really long race, 66 laps. Um, but hopefully both of you will have a better Monaco. Um, and get your seasons on track. Jambo, since that first race has not been great for you, so and the same will take the race as well. So hopefully both of you can get your quick start your seasons again at Monaco. Um, but until Good then, plan. or until later, I shall speak to you later on. Fearless is just now picked for the second time and Bobbers takes the lead again. So, Mr. Stebo, I don't know if you knew Chris, uh, Mr. Stebo says Monaco marks his return. So, he's only missing this week when he's back. Um, Mr. Indigo, though, purrs all, kept all his purrs until this point and a nice easy move with the DRS way, way before the corner. A good 500 metres before the corner, possibly. And keeps the corner, does it nice and easy. He has gone wide a couple of occasions before, but there it is, P6, ten drivers running, which is a bit of a shame. Hopefully no one else will back out because they won't score if they do. Uh, but they are, they are pretty close, you know. From second down to last, there's probably no more than 15 to 20 seconds. Um, the leader of Fearless is having an absolute blinder. He's really uh, pulled out everything he could out of the car today. I'm going to um, quickly go get a quick drink, so I'm going to leave you in the very, very capable hands of Chris Moss. Chris, who do you want to get on board with before I uh... Uh, You can go on board with current at third place. Yeah, yeah that'll be absolutely brilliant. Right, I'll leave it on fourth because that's Sean. He is hunting down the McLaren of. Psychic Taco Taco's up to P3. He's doing a good job. Good recovery drive. Um, is that Fearless in P2 or is that Andy in P2? Uh, no, that's Fearless in P2. Bob so Fearless has had his stop as an acceptable, but so Andy's also made his stop and he's gone back. There's a big group of them actually now, about seventh position. But I'll be right back and I'll be right back to the car. Sean Bean make the move, Jambo's already lost out, it's fine. And Sean, nice easy position gains there for him. So Sean now in a net third place after the incident with his last called Andy. We've got Saiki Taco behind him who is having an absolutely blistering race in that McLaren. A little bit of lag there by Taco's car and he has now lost out a couple of seconds to Sean after that first sector. Guys, if you're on the Twitter feed, unfortunately I am having some issues. But, you know, Twitter's just stupid. Anyway. 
Uh, but anyway, Extra Fearless, currently in P2, he has been absolutely dominating this race and is catching Extra Old Bobbers at a fast rate of not. Now, Bobbers is coming to the pits for his second stop on lap 26, as there's an actual little battle between 9th and 8th place. Is Stuart and Velexity, I'm currently on board with that, you guys are not unfortunately. And Velexity's just gone around the outside of uh, Stuart around turn 14. And he's gone up to P8, Stuart is now down to 9th with a catching LGS. And Taco has actually made a pit stop, he's now down into 10th place and running last at the minute. Interestingly, Sean is now ahead of XRL Bobberts, who is behind Nutters91, who's currently behind Sean Bean, who you guys are on board with. And Bobberts is now going down the inside of turn 5, that's a great move, and you'll be ever seeing the Ferrari catching up to Sean as soon as he gets there, which will be this lap, because Bobberts is absolutely fine. So guys, Dan said Fearless to win, I said Velexis to win. Dan's currently winning the bet at the minute between us. But who do you think at this current position is going to win? And Bobbers goes wide at turn 12 and Nutters just goes, thank you very much. So, Nutter's now back down to P4 after the DRS assistance of uh, Bobbers' car, and he's now chasing Sean again. This time, can he make it successfully, or will he spin out again? running very consistently, he's uh, got a fastest gap of a 23 dead, this is a relatively good pace for the stint he's on, he's 1.1 slower than Keith's fastest lap, um, but obviously he's on the fresher tyres. Sean, he's going to be under pressure any minute now from Bobberts, who's in third place. Chris, I hope you haven't been boring everyone. Well, <laughs> I, I, I think I may be actually. <laughs> um, right, so we've still got the 10 running, which is good. Stuart makes his pit stop then on the prime tyre. He's running P8 and he's about to do a stop, so he's not having a great race. LGS P6. Um, but Lexi is having a really good race, considering where he was at the start. He's really starting to make his way through the pack. In terms of lap time as well, he has done, I think, the second quickest lap, only slower than Fearless. Bobbitt is having also a very strong race as well. But yeah, Fearless has been in control today. Sean Bean, P2, he's got Bobbitt right for company behind him. And unfortunately, I've got technical issues, so the Twitter feed currently is at a standstill, even though I've got a tweet ready to send through. And Sean's just lost out to Bobber after going wide. I'm not sure if we've seen any real overtake of the week contenders yet so far from tonight, so. Now this is the battle to get on with Dan. Battle for P4, it's Velexity and Mr. Ice Cold Andy, two of the fastest guys in the division. Currently I, am on board. I don't know what the tire life of each of these guys is, but the Lexity is just uh Well, Sean Bean was struggling to get past the DRS, and Velexity's got past in the first time of me watching him. 
with ease as well. Han gets it into turn one quite easily. So for Lexi, he's now P4. Would you think he could have a go at Sean, who's running three, running quite old tyres? For Lexi's tyres don't look too bad. No, Belexi has pitted one more time than Sean. Uh, Sean's still on the one stop at the minute. Is Belexi the only per really running next to P2, or is that Bobbitt? Uh No, Bobbitt, he's ahead of uh, Sean, and he is on a fresh set of tyres as well. So Sean's going to go down quite a number of positions, and because those tyres, he needs to stop again. Interestingly, we've got a couple more in-game penalties, one for Nutters and one for NMR Mr. Indigo. Don't know what they're for, so that's going to have to be investigated as well. Yeah, but that's right. It's a very tight race. It is. I mean, Fearless currently has the running on there, but it doesn't take much to change it. Oh, it's been late, so he gets five-second lag. He wouldn't believe. He's actually got put behind. I think that's the Ferrari of... Oh, what? Yeah, that's the Ferrari of LGS. He's got put by now. That's unbelievable. He will be absolutely gutted with that. He was all lining up to move Sean Bean and P3. And now, that's a massive lag. That's more than five seconds. Without a doubt, well, Alexi's got the inside there. That's an easy move. But he's got to get the hammer down again because he must be so annoyed in that car to, yeah. to be where he was. And now, yeah. Arms down again. He, he must have lost more than five seconds. It looks like. Well, interestingly, I had seven second lag when we were at Bahrain just the other day. Um, so the lag's increasing by a second almost every month. Right, so Andy and Sean are resuming their battle, though this time Andy, you would think, has got, got it this one done a bit easier. Things about it. Can't quite do it. He's got the gun going to have the DRS down towards the hairpin here. Can he make a move? He's going to make a late dive down to the inside. He commits. And that's a move. He can force Sean wide there. That's fine. And that's move done. Sean now down into P4. His tyres are really having it now. Just got a sneaky feeling that Sean's going for a two stop rather than the traditional three stop here. Yeah, it could be. He's definitely extending his tyres beyond where they need to be. I didn't think his first stint was particularly long. No, I don't know. Maybe the primes are still working reasonably for him. Not he hasn't got that same performance that the others have got, like Alexity and Andy, but if he's gonna get about twenty seconds from doing one less stop then you know, go we just have to keep it about half a second of that on the rest. However, I think this is more of a two-horse race for the battle for the lead. Bobbitt is about 10 seconds behind Fearless, but... I think it's just a one-horse battle, isn't it? There's a big gap that Bobbitt has got to overhaul on Fearless, who has really been in control of the race. Very true, but one tiny mistake by Fearless could cost him the race. So shall we get tapped in here and see what he said about his debut race? Sean dives into the pitch, lap 32. That's an awful lot of laps and he's trying, trying to do a two-stop. I would suggest he's probably trying to do a three. But a very weird and long three at that. Yeah, he's got to do another... 42 laps at least. Yeah, Half race Sorry. distance. Good job I got a B GCSE now. <laughs> and Sean comes out dead last. Um, it's fine. Competition with Stuart. Stuart went to pitch only about a couple of laps ago on the prime tide. Look at the grip Sean's got now. He's all over the back going into turn four. Quite make it, but Stuart runs very wide there, and this should be done for Sean. It's a bit of curse, but he has to go around the long way. In fact, he is. In fact, 
he does, after a bit of a wheel bang Stuart, he does make it through. Probably deserved for sure now. Stuart didn't need to do that. Uh, in he goes, to be honest. He's going to have a low finish today. That would be a nut as in P7. Nowhere near as high as where I think he thought of himself being. Taco P6. He's definitely, I think, exceeded his own expectations so far. LGS in P5. Uh, and then we're on board back in this battle. The Lexi is fought right back up to Mr. Ice Cold and This is for the final uh, podium position. But a bit after last week's performance, Sotako getting a second place in the F1 division at Bahrain. He's a little bit gutted that he's not going to be on the same sort of level of performance. Yes. Yes and no. But this is just a weak track for him. It's not as strong as what the others are for him. So, it's just how it goes sometimes. Can't be strong at every track. But Alexi is really closing on that. And he's struggling a little bit more than what I thought today. Just down to a lack of practice, I know that he was celebrating his 18th midweek. Happy birthday to him. I uh, hope he enjoys his party. I would have assumed we would have had a party with him. Uh, and we went out and get pissed at the weekend. It would be nice if he can mark it off with a podium finish here in Spain. He's going to struggle though because of Alexis T. Right on his gearbox has half a curse, it's a far curse to use. He uses DRS and another half. And it's side by side, he's got past, and he's going to have to give that up. He does. And Velex, he's now into P3. Velex is flying. Taps. Just a disconnection. Was it a little bit more than that? Yo, what's going on? Be a, just a disconnect tonight, or? No, I have to go, man. Oh, right. Um, okay. That's what I was saying, man. Like, Any time, the game is always going to come second, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's fair enough. So I don't really want to do these big things. Yeah, well, that's why we're probably going to have to use you sparingly as a reserve, just in case. We do need you on a, on a night as to be what happens because you're uh, obviously extremely busy. Uh, but yeah, and the pace is looking really good. Yeah, I know, it's looking like a good race. Um, you're running with Bobbitts, running for, well, he's now P2, so you were running for podium positions. Um, so do you think you had the running of him? Um. I don't know. Can't say really. He is quick around there. Yeah, he is. Not doing too bad. I'm mean, about 10 seconds of the lead, so he's doing a good job. But, uh, yeah, decent driving for me today. Um, hopefully, we do need next time, whenever that could be. I uh, we can make a full race, but it's on the sound for right, no uh, yeah, no a while. See that. See that attack. Uh, see that attack. So, I've got Andy made a third pit so stop. So what does now. he do then to be busy all the time? Uh, I think mean, he's just got work. He's got a lot of work issues. And work is more important, which is understandable. Well, Lexi's got a hunt down. Bobbitt's with P2. That's about a 10 second gap. If that gets Sean Bean in, Sean, what was up today? Hey. I don't know, the gearbox just went kaput. <laughs> Shifted gearbox down to third for turn kaput. one. Shifted down to third for turn one, and it went straight into reverse and spun me around. And then Lovely. I tried to creep back to the pits, and then it went to neutral and go anywhere else. Well, that's an odd one, I've never seen that before. Um, I think that's my wheel, I don't think it's the game. Oh, really? I don't know. It's the same. It's, it's, I think I've been blessed. It's like, yeah, you can have connection again, but everything else is going to go wrong for you. <laughs> <laughs> I say, you're not racing.
you know what? I really want to, so I might might is make it an half exception. Term this week or is it? it is uh, half term this week, oh, but if it's on the oh. Sunday night, then yeah, I have yeah. an exam on the Monday morning. But if I can, because I'm pretty prepared for it, so if I can get that all sorted this week, then I will be racing at Monaco because it is my favourite track, and I have a lot of pace there. I haven't scored a point. I <laughs> haven't scored a point from your turn. You look to have a decent pace when you have when you have issues there. You're running hot in high positions, you're running with that Mr. Rice called Andy for a bit. Um in the sound of driving between the two. Um a little bit of aggressive driving I think on both parts between me and Andy. There was that spin I'm, I'm sure you picked it up. Yeah. But in general, the car just felt horrible. I mean, the pace was all right, but the car just felt horrible to drive, and I just sliding everywhere under steer. I was, I knew I was gonna, didn't have pace because I just couldn't carry the speed through the corners that others could. I'm not yeah. a specialist on high downforce tracks like this. You That's why I'm so quick in the last sector. Yeah, I thought I was quite confident with my practice, but. I mean, my Once third you sector. Once you it to the track against all the different guys together, it's a, it's a completely game. different story. Yeah. Uh, oh well. Uh, well. I'm gonna go and practice the Monaco now. Happy days. Um, last quick question. GP2 tomorrow night. How great Bernie's chances? Well, I haven't seen much of his practice, but based on his cocky attitude, like. In Constantly cocky attitude and how it didn't end up working out for him. I haven't heard much from him, so you know it's, it's, his favourite driver comes from here, even though it's crap. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he could do well, I reckon. But you've got the likes of Psychic Taco racing in GP2. He is and Stuart yep. as well. I and think Stuart, Rusty I reckon Taco has turn. got good pace, and I reckon he'll be one of the top guys. But yeah, I reckon Bernie will be out there. Wow, my favourite for the win is not myself. Uh, it'll be my teammate. I think it's got a really good chance. Cosy looks to have a good race pace. GP2 is such a tight division. Uh, I miss it. <laughs> yeah, he got this bit more pressure on this division. Sure, that's the thing. Uh, that's, if you look at it, you've got people like Reese, and Reese has been incredibly unlucky today. Um, to be where he was. Oh, we got two penalties, have we, for Andy and for Indigo? We did have a third one with Nutters as well. Now, this will be interesting to see what the connection is like for the rest of the race. Yeah, it's Well, let's see how it goes anyway. We've I don't think it's going to be as bad as last week. Here's nuts, here's nuts. Bad one? Lack of practice Dude. by the looks of it. Not a lack of practice. You, oh, no. you get taken out in the first corner. Oh yeah, we saw that. Uh, so annoyed. And then, I got, uh, and I was coming out of the pits there. My game, I don't know whether it was a glitch from before or something. I just drove straight and it just gave me a penalty for um, coming out of the pit, crossing the pit line. Um, yeah. But I don't have I don't have my PVR running or anything. I forgot to put it on, so I wouldn't even be able to appeal against it. Um, I, so I was just fed up. And then I had like a coming together with Jambo and he got a side pod glitch. Gone off. I got a penalty for that, so I just I just gave up. So, Sorry the game. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to pick my Xbox up and throw it out the door. <laughs> so angry. I was crying because that's the best qualifying I'd actually done. I was like, okay, here we go, it's going to be good. And I was facing backwards in the gravel <laughs> at turn one. I was like, hooray, it's going to be great. I think it's a shame about the lack of finishes today, but I think every driver has had like, their own individual reasons why they couldn't finish the race. Um, yeah. We had some glitches and stuff going on. Just had to go. Just 
Well, we remember last year yeah, where I, I got remember lapped. Last I got, year lap very I got well. lapped twice. <laughs> <laughs> I did nine. I did nine pit stops, and I I come fourth. So yeah, look at <laughs> Monaco. <laughs> um, I don't know, dude. I'll get I'll get some practice for Monaco. Mm. I'm not track I'm very good at just because I'm not coordinated enough to work the pad fast enough for Monaco. So I'll 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 be bound to crash at some point. Everyone's bound to crash at least once. One yeah, thing I'd point out, how quick you are. You are. safety car is a very, very high possibility, and that can really screw up strategy at Monaco. State the obvious. No, <laughs> in particular on the game, because obviously the game isn't coded right, so it, the safety oh, yeah. car just comes out whenever someone breaks a bit of their front wing. So yeah, I mean I was racing on a 25% distance race around Monaco and the safety car came out seven times. Well, I'm a bit disappointed because you guys as well as you are deprived of racing because really good racing. As soon as the first one lap calmed down, it was very, very close between many of them. Uh, many of the guys were very, very close. But one last question from both of you. What do you think of a possible F1 2010 lead? Yes. I guess you'd have to own F1 to be a Yeah, but who, can, but who can't go down to game do and it. buy it for three quid? It does. It's, do it. It's weird, because I, do like, now. again, play the older games, and I'm like, what? Where's all the glitching? Why isn't everyone ghosting? What's going on? I'm like, oh, wait, this game actually works. That's the one we're playing. <laughs> I'm That's very quick on F1 2010, so yes, do it. Not only that, I have actually take my had money. a cyborg glitch on F1 There is still glitches there. Yeah, well, I think, what, 2011, no one really talks about it, but I can't remember what was wrong with it. But then 2012 had the lag bubble behind the car. That was pretty cool. F1 2011, the um, balance and the performance was too unrealistic. It stuck to the ground like glue. Well, you wouldn't, would you? You need the pace, you need the advantage. I, I do. <laughs> yeah, 2010. Last game, and it's got Please, Turkey you on it. You just pick it up in the game for like five, and then you set it to play. I think, I think it's something that would probably happen. Just, maybe it's a bit of fun, but it does seem a bit of a statement to Cody Marston to say that. Sean <laughs> sure was the host. I was the host? You were the host. Good thing I left our It's someone to so you think it's going to stay. I can't remember who said who was going to win or had the chance to win. I think it might be me. Everyone laughed me off in the lobby. But really good today. Here he goes. A different winner. Proving it's right. Yeah, well, I'm going to win tomorrow. I hope that one's right as well. Oh, uh, he's he's lost it. I have a feeling that one's probably not. Uh, Commentator's curseception. Um, Toasty's watching. Speaking of practice, I'm going to go and do some Monaco because Monaco is amazing. Okay. And Lewis Hamilton won uh, there. Take nuts with you. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, go. That sounds a good idea. How's Contrast and opinions there. Still really busy, or are you having a quiet? Me? Yeah. No, super busy. The last, the only practice I got in. I was Friday, I was up at six. A bit of a lie. Oh, <laughs> seven o'clock. Oh, that's not a lie. Really? Monaco is still. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not very good. Not like good one. Yeah. But whatever the race is, Canada. That's a good one. Yeah. I know I'm the host. 22 laps to go. I'm counting them down. Um, okay, yeah. Speak to you next week, or if not, I'll just go and speak to you next week. Let's see if you keep on track. Monaco is not the strongest, but anything can happen at Monaco. Is there. It's a shame that we've had so many people drop out. It sort of deprives people that watch the people who watch the stream us of, 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 of good I'm racing. Dream lag on my. On what? What are you getting stream lag on? I don't even hear you. I don't no. Can you hear me now? Very good to make a move on Andy soon here, going through the quick chicane here up the hill to the right hand. Can he have a go? He will wait and get DRS here. DRS active. He doesn't actually use any curves though. He's probably going to need to save it all for this attempt on the start finish line. Say he's going to get the final podium place. Me? No, I think Alexi will. Look at it, he's going over Andy here. Um, he's going to have another go. He looks a lot closer than he was last time this lap. Again, Andy just seems to get a I better final be corner. Are you getting a lot of lag? No. I think my connection's going in because problem with my computer and I'm jumping about and I can but lovely defensive driving from Andy. That was very good defensive driving from Andy there. Um, I was expecting him just to roll over there. Lexi's chance, it goes down the inside, he's going to have the inside line going into the hairpin. And he gets a much better drive, but he can't go any further because Lexi's pumped this car very, very well. And that's a move done, and well, Lexi's up to that P3. He's got Bobbitts to chase down, but you would think that's probably just a little bit out of reach for him. Me. Only three people have managed to break under the 1 minute 20 at the minute. That is Fearless, Bobbitt and Psychic Tucker who's down in 6th place at the minute. 
He has a bit better pace than what he's leaning on to have. So, from qualifying, Dan, in 14th place, would you have even counted him out for a podium? Who is this? Bobbitt. Yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't have. Just because you look at the guys who are racing in front, and they're all quick. And I think if everyone stayed in the lobby, he might not have got it, but... Hard to say. I mean, he's built a big enough gap up to Valencia and Andy, who were involved in the early incident, like the start, so it was nutters. I mean, quite a lot of them were involved. He got up quite a lot of positions early, and he has had the pace to hold off any people that have got close. Uh, Tax, for example, was there for a time. Um, so was LGS, I think. Well, maybe not LGS, but there were drivers who were with him, and he's been able to hold them off. He's got about an 8 to 10 second gap. Um, for P2, so he could still be caught. I mean, Valexi has got good pace, but it's one thing catching up, another thing making the move. So, first eight is about 21 seconds. He's got a 10 second lead on Andy, so it's about an eight second lead to Valexi. So, that is catchable. Valexi will fill with. Uh, 16 laps after this one, that he's got the chance. Wouldn't discount him yet. race has just gone quiet. Paco's in P5, he isn't going to do much more than that. And he is in P4, he's definitely dropped off the legs now. It took one and a bit laps, he's been behind, he's dropped off by nearly a second per lap now. The legs will be trying to chase down our race leader, uh, or not race leader, our race second place, Bobbert, who gets about eight, nine seconds. See what he can do. He's got 16 laps left on this stint of tyres, I think. He might pit again for a set of options. Um, but I think he needs to use undercuts and a little bit more if he wants to get that second place today. Chris, your race is at GP3 Tuesday night. What do you think of that? I'm going to hope for a top five finish, um, obviously I've got a couple of days left to practice, got a couple of days off from college as well, so happy day for me. But and after who's the person the that could... Your I eyes. think after his definite strong start to the season, it's got to be a Stevo. He, he has been on lightning form, got second in Australia only for a 10 second penalty to drop him down to fifth. Won the last uh, race in China, got second in Bahrain, uh, only just with an extra pit stop as well. He's definitely the one to watch out for, and he's currently leading the championship as well, and he's definitely deserves. Yeah, I've barely been able to tune in to uh, GP3 races, so it'll be interesting to see how that hand out, really. I mean, Stevo's done a good job, but there are plenty of others who can, uh, there's, there's not as he's far and away the quickest driver in the, in the GP3 division.
Just for that, I've got another one just going, if I can get it in. Oh, I absolutely hate the way that Twitter has only 140 characters. gonna go for a game of COD with me. I haven't done that in ages, have I? I mean, I do need to. We, we first, have not. first things first, being toasty, I'm gonna get on the track at Catalonia. And uh, put some laps in for tomorrow. Uh, I do wanna do practice tomorrow, but I have a feeling that although I'll say I've got all day, I'll have like an hour or two, because I'll just find other stuff to do. As Alexi, I think the spin sort of confirmed that he was going into the pits there, so undercutting Bobbert might help him out by a couple of seconds, but um, has, I think it was about right, as I think that's Andy in the pits as well, and the Williams, will he get held up? He will, he will get held up, so that's lost a little bit of time there, but I don't know if he's going to be able to catch. I tell you what, Bobbert has closed that gap to Fearless, not by a lot. Well, that has closed. It's slowly starting to decrease with every lap that's coming down. He's really starting to impress Bobbitt. He's deserved, I think, based on the pace he's deserved, his second place, I think. Definitely, especially, especially after the first corner incident where he started last and now he's up to second. He's been there for the entire race. Yeah. But he's just gone off as we talk. <laughs> oh, that's my, that's my lag. All oh, right, yeah, I was just saying, let's show you how to track at the moment. But if you guys want to run down, I have put one on twi uh, Twitter feed. Uh, yeah, it's currently Sirius, then Bobberts, then Velexity, Mr. Ice Cold, Andy in fourth, then Psychic Taco, the reserve, LGS in sixth. NMR Mr. Indigo in 7th, he's had a little bit of a treacherous middle section of this race. And bring out the field is x Stewart. That's a good sign for tomorrow But remember though, Dan Stewart, he was involved in the first corner incident and he does currently have the fastest lap of the race as well. Yeah. Taco now up into third place due to Alexi's pit stop, I believe. Yeah, but Alexi isn't too far behind. I'm just keeping an eye on the minimap for that P1 and 2. I mean, Bobbitts doesn't look like have it as Fearless makes his final stop now. If I was Bobbert, so I'd just follow. There's no point in front. And he does, he follows. So, I don't know, does he? Yeah, he, he does can. follow. So, yeah, there's no point trying to. He can't get to the end on those tyres, so, you know, the man will do what he does. I'm just hope that you're a little bit quicker, but it's going to be difficult. What though, it's going to be a lot closer between him and Velexity now. Velexity's obviously on the warmer tyres, but obviously a lap or two different is going to take it to the effect. The gap's actually grown since I looked last. It's a good 11 seconds. Lowest guy on track is none other than Mr. Ice Cold Andy, but he has just recently made a pit stop, so that may make things slightly more difficult. We have 
to say, based off the qualifying performance at Bahrain, you could tell that a decent result was coming for Peerless of late um, match, but admittedly on the other tyre, but that was a start, because that is Button's strongest track, so... I believe his, his, today was his first pole position, but if he gets the race win, I think that's his first ever F1 division race win. It would be, a, yep, F1 division, yep. It's been incredible seeing us two seasons ago, he was down in the leagues of F4, battling it out. There you go, guys. Anyone who's watching in F4, there you have it. Yeah, except for JK10. Except for JK10, of course. But even myself, last season, half season in there, I'm now in GP3. Yeah, that's from the lower a bit leagues is the way to go. But starting from the lower leagues is the way to go, though. Oh, definitely. That's your TRL button. TRL button wasn't always great. 2012, it was nothing special. No, right, but I could I, be I've in. heard uh, stories that a certain person who's in XRL told him something and now he seems to be one of the biggest guys in the game. Yeah, that, that was me. Just passed him tips of advice. Was it you though? Was it you? <laughs> yeah. I'm the people's person. Oh, except for when it comes on COD. <laughs> no, I don't like people. Here we go, so Taco Pits. That makes it nice and easy for Galaxy, but not that really makes too much difference because Alexi has got a nice open clear track in front of him. Uh, we've got LGS and that's Mr. Ice Cold Andy. Andy, he's got slightly fresher tyres and he's got the DRS now. Try and make a move as quick as that in the 19s. Impressive. Interestingly, Bobberts has got a 9 tenths out of Fearless on that last lap. It's not over then. You would think it is. Oh. I mean, there's 10 laps here. Need to close a lot quicker than that. Andy, what? That's close between him and LGS, but that looks like move done. But I just got Andy in fourth place. If he can stay in, that's a, that's a good recovery for Andy. He's been really struggling this season. Fourth place in second place, decent points. Get him off the get him off the board. GP2 tomorrow night. I believe there's a couple, a couple of new drivers. XRL Rusty returning tomorrow night as well uh, for his first. Well, back again. So, I don't know. It's really interesting. It's Andy, all we need loses it. Comes back onto the racing line just in time for the corner. But LGS is possibly got a chance here. He's got half his curves. Deploys it all on the exit of the final corner. Gets in the slipstream. DRS open. Will he use a bit of curves? He does. About a quarter. Can he make a move going into the running outside of turn one? He's on the option tyres, he could break late. No, he's on the prime tyres, sorry, and he does, he keeps it in. Round the outside, and he though defending round the inside of Oh, there's a little bit of lag there. And it looks like LGS has used all of his curves to defend. He opens out a bit of a gap, and he's trying to sneak down the inside. He can't do it. He comes back though, and he is fighting straight wheel to wheel with LGS here. LGS having the inside, the higher ground here. But Andy's having none of it. He tries to go around the outside. And it looks like Andy's going to hold him off here. He does. Great defensive driving from Mr. Ice Cold Andy to hold on to that P4. It's not over yet though, because LGS is going to have DRS going into the hairpin. He's just lost a little bit of time going through the sweeper there. And it looks like he's going to hold back. He's got no curves to attack this time. So he's got to really get close onto the back of that uh, gearbox of Mr. Ice Cold Andy out of the final couple of corners. So it looks like he's just dropped a bit of time off. While you were on board with that battle, there was a battle between the McLarens and Taco, who's just got the fresh tyres and has just pulled away from Stuart. not used any curves this time. Gets side by side. He's going to try it around the outside, but couldn't quite manage it there. And this time he's going to have to settle. And he makes sure he's, he's, too, or he's just starting to use the curve. Not too much. He 
he'll probably save it for later on. These two are going to go fully at it, and Andy, that fourth place is not his just yet. Seven laps to go. The battle between first and second is coming down at least a second a lap. It is just incredible. Corbett is pushing as hard as he can. I think it's going to be a little bit too much to do. As I would say, the gap is about nine seconds with seven laps to go. He's going to have. I fear this is going to have to make some crazy mistake for um, that to happen. But LGS getting past Mr. Ice Cold Andy. Andy now, he's got no curves to attack with. So he's literally going to be slipstream and DRS until the curves reactivate to start finish. It's now reactivated and he uses it straight away. He uses his half. He's not really gaining any closer though. using the rest of his curves going around turn three there. Bit of an odd place to use it, tries to go around the outside to really give himself a slingshot through into the hairpin. Can't quite do that. We look down the inside. That is a sloppy move from Andy. And he realises that and he's lost a big round because of it. Just not the right place to try it. LGS positioning his car very well. And he possibly making a slightly sloppy move there from last season's champion and he will keep fifth place, DRX wide open going into the hairpin. He'll gain a little bit of time, but he won't make a move. I, don't know, I think it's maybe just me, but I feel Andy's coping worse with the pressure of being the defending champion than he was when he was actually going for the championship last year. Weird. Some to defend such a tough. It's such a tough thing to defend. That builds more pressure on because you should be. You expect the results. And those results have not really come yet from Mister Ice Cold Andy. This gearbox of the Williams just doesn't seem to have that extra oomph to get him past LGS round here. Definitely a shame for him, but he is doing very well in the Classics. He's uh, won the first two races of uh, the Classic season, so he'll be up there probably. In and he'll uh, get a race of champion season. spot, yeah. And if he actually wins that race of champions like he did at the end of last season, then well, it would probably be coming out of nothing because. Current race pace at the minute is not the highest level which you want. It's not the level he would expect. I think it's down to just the time of year. Get into the summer, get when the school is finished um, and his exams are out of the way. You can spend a little bit more time on the game. I think you'll start to see the stars go. One that possibly can compete to a slightly higher standard a little bit more. Yeah. But we'll see. I think time will tell. Um, get to about the mid season stage. We'll have a little bit more of an idea as to whether he can pose a serious threat at the front of the grid or not. But fifth place, fourth place, wherever he gets, is five laps left, including this one. So it, it's points on the board. I mean, something that he needs, he needs a top five double figure points for this would be very, very good for him. I think he'd accept that. He's trying to get on his and he has not made the move and he's already thrown the end of sector one. I think a different change of idea is needed as he tries to go the long way around at the hairpin. Doesn't quite make it, uh, but he's to a different the only car is fighting out on track with four and a half laps to go. Tries to go a long way around at the hairpin. And he seeks, runs wide. Gets on the inside, runs wide, makes sure he blocks LGS's route around the outside off. Clever driving from Mr. Ice Cold Andy. The only issue being he's now got uh, he's 
right now, depending on DR, has seen that Williams gearbox not be necessarily the strongest today. But he's built a decent enough gap on that last few corners. He just seems to get such a good drive out of a couple of these corners at the end that last came. getting onto the battle of these two since they've been battling and three laps to go, fresher tyres, it looks possible they may even get a full place out of this. DRS on XRL LGS. He's looking for the move into turn one. And he's got it with ease. remaining in this Spanish Grand Prix. Taco now running in fifth place. He's catching Mr. Ice Cold and he's got DRS as well. Close enough going. Can he do it? He's got a bunch of pressure tyres, hasn't he? So he's got an outside chance of fourth place. I mean his strategy tonight has been good. You would have thought Mr. Ice Cold Andy's seen off the opposition now yes. And twelve points was his. Well it's not quite yet. He's got two more laps to hold off yet. He's run wider than SUK. Look at Taco got Club. Perfect. Drive out the final corner. A little bit of curves use. Gets in the slipstream. Opens DRS. A little bit more curves to attack. He's going to make a move around the outside. Can he go around the long ways? No. Not quite. And yeah, he's going to be able to try every trick in the book to make sure that he keeps that lead. Is he out? Tries to go around the outside again. Taka Taka goes, tries to go around the outside. This could be a great move. He's gone a little bit deep. He's going to have the inside for the following corner, though. And it looks like he can just force Sandy wide. That's a great move. Great Back build up move. move I oh, know. We have to wait 65 laps for one. But Taco made a great move there. And that is P4. And those tyres have just worked a treat. Now, um, fastest lap looks to be Bobbitt's on an 18.5. Maybe doing a point This is why there you are, are the F1 division yeah. drivers there, Dan. And that's why I don't think I'm ever going to get back into that division. <laughs> oh, but with practice, you you get there eventually. A couple of years. 25 years maybe. As Fearless goes around the final corner and claims his first F1 division victory. He's deserved it and it's been in the lead from the start to the finish and a great win for Red Bull. Bobbitt's not too far behind and looked really good in this race. The 
slowly climbing up the uh, ladder in terms of results. And he'll be really pleased with the second place. Third place going around the last few corners of the Lexity. Probably would have been the race winner today if it wasn't for the first few court laps where he got held up. Got a long way back and it was a great fighting performance to finish third place. Fourth, Psychic Taco. That late move on Andy seems to work to treat his build a massive gap. Um, fifth is Mr. Rice Cold Andy. Sixth is LGS. Jamie sends me a message. Bad idea. When is the stewards report? Hey, okay. Johnny Boy. Uh, P6 is LGS. I think we're waiting on some actually. My, my apologies. Uh, Stuart making a hatch of the final corner, but still manages to just beat NMR Mr. Indigo, who was second in the championship this time around before tonight. But I do not think he'll be keeping that one, funnily enough. So, fearless, get, can you, if you can get them in, Chris, that would be great. Yeah. So, yes, as we see, Indigo, well, the bottom two picking up time penalties. Mr. Ice Cold Andy actually suffering quite badly because of it. Um, but congratulations to the top guys. Hello? Mm. Slightly Hello. depleted field for today's race, unfortunately, but an, a great one nonetheless. Chris, take it away. You what? Sorry, you were lagging then. I, th you I think he said. Chris, I think he said, Chris, take it away. Oh, well, Key, congratulations on your first F1 division. Thank you very victory. much. I mean, you had an absolute dominatory victory out there. Um, tell us, how did you feel in the race, especially with that first corner? Well, with my first thought was just to get a clean getaway, which I managed to do, and then I nailed the first corner, and then I looked back, and it was just, I don't even know what happened, to be honest, but I knew velocity and nut, as I think it was, and ended up taking whatever it was from behind <laughs> I'd say one from then on it was just the first dint it was just to get as much of a gap out as possible to the group behind and I managed to get about a six second gap I think it was and then after that it was just about getting back through the field for those prime runners and then after that just maintaining the gap especially to Bobbitt at the end without making any mistakes going on about Bobbitt, did you feel that he ever had a chance of catching you towards the end of the stint? Um, I'd, I'd say no, but only because I was in such a zone where I just wasn't making any mistakes and I was, the main objective and especially in that last stint was just to keep the gaff to Bobbitt, which I managed to do quite well and unfortunately I think he did make a mistake towards the end, but far from that, I mean, I think he had a pretty much covered, it was just about not making mistakes, which I managed to do. Well, congratulations Fearless. Bob, it's going on Thank to you. you, starting 14th in the race, and get second place, I am sure you are more than thrilled. I think thrilled is a little bit of an understatement, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a great race, great result. Um, uh, but yeah, that, that start, I don't know what happened, um, all I know is that it pretty much played into my hands. I mean, I decided, well, I did actually attempt to put a qualifying lap in, but each of my three attempts were just absolutely awful, so I decided, you know, start the back, get out of the way at the first corner and just start on brand new prime tyres, which worked out for me. I mean, um, I obviously I did get into the, into the lead um, by lap 10 when Fearless had pitted, um, and then after that point it was just trying to get a you know, try and get a gap in between some of the people who had made their first stops, which thankfully again went my way and I only had to pass uh, a couple of people. So it was a case of, you know, maintaining second place after that first stop uh, and see if I could catch um, Fearless at any point. I mean, we were trading lap times every single time, whether he'd gain a few tenths or if I'd gain a few tenths. But, I mean, congrats to Fearless today. He did deserve the win getting Paul and he dominated today. So, congr well, well done to you again, Keith. Nice one, okay, mate. Um, and 
then finally going on to the next seat, starting second, you had an absolute terrible first corner, but yet you still managed to pull it back to a third place. So I don't even happened. know how I did that. That first corner, um, I think Nutters was on the outside, then someone was on the inside. Nutters has turned in slightly, I think, and he side-podded on me, pushed me to the right into whoever was on the inside. Then I've side-podded off them, and then obviously all the cars are coming round, and I've side-podded off someone else <laughs> on the same corner. And yeah, I've just gone straight to the back. And then, oh. uh, coming through the field, got another four second lag, which pissed me off again. Um, I don't even know how I've got third, to be honest. Oh, you did have an amazing drive. Um, so, that's all from me. Uh, congratulations, Fearless, and well done to all the drivers here tonight. Uh, now I'm going back to Bernie. Well, for the four weeks, well, you, me and you are commentating for the next four weeks, Chris, and I'm 1 0 up on the predictions, so I think you need to find a little bit. Um, but yeah, well done to Key tonight. Completely deserved race win. Lexi, I thought you were a pretty good rally for third place, really. You were a bit unlucky with your first lap. You got a bit of a five second lag as well when you were near Andy. Well, I think it was a bit more than five second lag to put you by the hand of the I can hear him. I can hear him. I can hear you, Dan. It's alright, you can carry on. No, I don't want to speak to you. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Sorry, was I no not problem. meant to come second? Uh, no, no, <laughs> oh, I'm very happy for you. If you're going to finish second tom tomorrow, then I need a win tomorrow. No, if you want, whatever, right? I don't know what I'm talking about, it's been that good a race. I think the first lap was just a bit of a... Apart from the first lap, it was a really good race. But you guys will be back on sa next Sunday from the... Principality of Monaco for round six of the F1 Championship. I will be back racing tomorrow with Swish Bonus streaming with Chris in the box. So Chris is on streaming or commentating duties two days in a row. Um, we expect to see me lapping the fields this week, guys. So just tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, the oh, I'm too the funny. I just can't. I can't just do that. Come on, Dan. Yeah, that's um, what I thought. If you can win a race, Key, so can I. Um, maybe in a few years' well, time. Maybe, yeah, in a few maybe, years time. maybe, yeah. Maybe if you went down a few divisions, Dan, maybe. No. Maybe if you went down to tier 6 with Chris. I'm not even in tier 6. <laughs> but before these guys start to speak about how bad a driver I am, we're going to head off, but... <laughs> Chris and Pete Markoff will be in the box tomorrow night for GPT.